First question is the what is the new normal? I think that every audience is uh, are already uh, accustomed to this uh, terminology, <coughs> and then. Uh, as you know, the traditional characteristics of the new normal is that low growth, low income, low return, and then high risk. But after COVID-19 pandemic, uh, I think that there is a new normals of the new normal terminology. For example, healthcare, online, of the e-commerce, and so on, and home and remote work and change of consumption pattern and deglobalization and resilience than efficiency and then more focus on the credibility. So in terms of these characteristics of the new normal, uh, Hiro, could you share some insight in your thinking? Um, yeah, especially under this COVID crisis, um, and uh, after the COVID crisis, right? Like I, I personally don't believe that the world, this world will never come back to what used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone on the planet, literally everyone on the planet has, you know, has its own very first handed experience to really define what the new normal is like, right? For example, for my, you know, household that has two adults, me and my wife and four kids without moving more than a mile or two or like a few kilo, kilometers uh, in the last few months or like in more like in six, seven months, everything seems fine. It's still very awkward, right? But, you know, but still like people really get used to it. Simply put, uh, the, the desirization of the modern life mm. and the internet really helps. Right? The, the, my kids keep taking school classes over Zoom and that they are, they seem totally fine. I mean, a little bit stressful, but totally fine. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm not like you know, being to my office for the last eight eight months. Even though, like you know, I'm just living in uh, that town called Los Altos, which is right next to the Mountain View, where the Treasure Data Headquarters is located. You know, the without office visit, you know, it's challenging mentally, but still, like you know, totally manageable, right? Mm. And then if you know, if you know, the people ask me about like, you know, the when or how we can come back to the normal. I don't think it ever happened, you know, never again, I think. That is my opinion. I see, yeah. So in this situation of the new normal and then, then totally different situation with the pandemic, I think that all the enterprises and organizations go is very simple. Yeah, mm -hmm. overcoming this new normal. Uh, this uh, kind of disaster and then utilizing the new normal. So what should companies and organizations do to overcome the pandemic and transform risk into real and new opportunities? Could you share your thoughts? Sure, uh, I think it's very, very interesting and a good question. I um, mean, this COVID-19 crisis is not like a past economic or geopolitic driven crisis. Right? This is fundamentally different. This is going to be the pivotal change of the modern life for any human beings, especially for those who live in more like a modern developed uh, world. So people have their own definition of the, the new normal, as I said, like, you know, everything is challenging in any, every aspect of the life, right? Uh, the way to work, way to learn, way to shop, and the, the way to take healthcare services everything. Economy, education, society are now everything, you know, that we are now like embracing the new experience under the COVID lockdown mm -hmm. and, uh, and then now actively looking for the new norm, right? So, but even though like everything is challenging right now, and of course the companies and the businesses cannot be the exception here. The, I, I think like, you know, the, the, the crisis, this crisis has really crystallized the difference between excellent companies and others. Mm -hmm. The way of responding to this crisis really, really required, right? That you really have to find a way to, about how to really overcome anyway. Solidify, solidifying the agile, flexible, supple, religion uh, operation is really, really required here. 
and uh, to really make it happen, the decentralization of the business operation, like you said, or like, you know, decision making process, embracing work life balance are more like a must have right now. Mm. And plus, company value and objectives are, you know, to be shared with the older employees, stay aligned on the same page, are also increasingly important. These are going to be more like an important tie to employees that everyone has observed and followed. The outcast, you know, from those values have to go out from the business, in a sense. Okay? And the most, in a sense, like, you know, uh, the most crystallized essential form of embracing the change is the trend of the digital transformation, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. We have all seen the clear winner, like I said, the excellent company, you know, keep winning the business in the market by successful transformation of business, business, which is driven by digital. I'm not just talking about like, you know, the the Silicon Valley companies like Google or Netflix. I'm more like talking about even the traditional businesses, right? They're very, very clear difference between ones who have a very successful transformation and are not. And by the way, this is where treasure data can certainly help uh, by helping com- those companies uh, for increasing a data utilization. By the way, this is more like uh, the ad <laughs> by me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, great. Uh, you said that the keyword digital transformation, actually in lots of Korean big enterprises are very focusing on to implement digital transformation. And I, I believe that this keyword is not only for Korea, but also for global wide. So the main question is that how can data help organizations realize this digital transformation? Yeah, I mean, the data, right? The first of all, like, you know, the, the, we should all start with the, uh, the clear assumption mm-hmm. that data has a certain credibility, meaning you trust your data. You can trust your data. Under this you know, assumption, data can definitely help to understand each individual, even they are remote and uh, intact, right? Everything, everyone, everything, like in happening, uh, you know, related to the company or company product can be in a sense trackable right now. And, uh, you know, by, you know, the, by helping, um, by working with the customers, you know, we are actively helping them by collecting real-time behavior, log data from various interaction channels, devices, like a web or offline or like, you know, applications from any aspect of the life for each consumer, right? Uh, in terms of data engineering, you really have to be aware of a few key points in a sense. First of all, like, you know, the, the big data needs to be processed in a short time to really utilize it. Uh, the, the now like a technology can really make it happen, right? It doesn't really have to be like, you know, super, super real time in a sense, but shorter the data cleansing and the processing, the better you can adapt for uh, the result of the data analytics for the business, right? Mm. And then next you really have to find the, the best data source to really understand uh, you know, the, what you want to track for or understand for. For example, companies like Google or like Amazon or Netflix, you know, have used it, right? You know, since the, this is how, in a sense, they started the, their business. Right? For example, Amazon knows everything about me in shopping context. Netflix knows everything about my taste of movies or like, you know, the TV shows. By doing that, like, you know, they can fully personalize what I see, right, in my Netflix homepage, right, without me spending any time, literally, like, you know, the, I kind of know, like, you know, what to see next. <laughs> um, and also, like, you know, the, the data is a natural result of the service interaction between the organization and the, and, the, and the target and the customers or the users, as opposed to many people's imagination, many people's imagination. It is not that difficult to really generate and uh, accumulate big data. Yeah. Right? When people hear about the big data, like you know, the, you know, the, some people might feel like it's not really my thingy. It's not true. 
So many businesses, in fact, already have their own proprietary data, right? Um, and a big data sources, in a sense. Like it, it is just a matter of like, you know, the, the design for service and the relationship between the service or like a product and the data. You know, usually one data set has its own characteristics and that, you know, that's the way the, the value of the integrated and the connected data is enormous only if they are connected in the right way because there are lots of, you know, the cases of data silos. You know, each sub organization under even the single corporation, right, own its own data, you know, the meaning, for example, financial organization in the same company, right, you know, owns financial data and the production system, production organization owns factory data, like yield management data and the marketing owns web data, campaign data. Especially for the traditional businesses, meaning not so digital native businesses like, you know, the, the Google or Amazon, right? Breaking those data silo is the most important. Very often, this is, I think it's very important uh, here. Uh, very, very often it is only top executives, or even in extreme case, only CEO who can solve the problem, data side of problem. If a company is lucky to have such a smart, great leaders, the first step of the data transformation itself will surely be successful. I can guarantee you. But the leadership matters here most. Right? I often explain to my peer CEOs that, like, you know, the, um, that, like, you know, in fact, you could be the problem, Mr. CEO, right? <laughs> That's kind of funny, but you know, the, um, I, I'm, 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 I'm trying to be bold in a sense, but like the CEO himself or herself could be the problem. You could be the blocker of the, of the, of the change, even unconsciously, right? Without proactively move by you, everyone in your organization may suffer for the future. And then flip side of the coin is that if you're brave and if you're ready to change the way to manage the business, especially when it comes to the traditional business, right? Everything is possible in terms of the, of the distress transformation. You know, that, that is actually a very important key point that I'm always feeling uh, in uh, whenever I have an interaction with the customers. The World Knowledge Forum.